Hello to everybody and uh, uh, welcome to the unfortunately or fortunately last lecture of uh, the, our journey on causality. And uh, in, this, uh, in this last lecture, we will try to um, give a little bit more of meaning to what, we, um, to what we've done about counterfactuals. And uh, uh, we'll try to, uh, to understand a little bit more deeper how we can, uh, how we can calculate counterfactuals. So, and uh, uh, in order to do this, uh, we will um, go on uh, in our mixed approach of natural language and mathematical language, because one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm convinced and I'm strongly, I'm strongly addressed in, in this kind of calculation is that counterfactuals uh, uh, represent one, uh, one of the most important ability of the human brain, that is the ability to build up words that do not act actually exist. As you may know, we are homo sapiens. Uh, and uh, uh, we are actually, the human beings uh, are, have an, an uh, unusual overwhelming of uh, DNA from Homo sapiens. We have a little bit of Neanderthal, a little bit of Denisova, but we are mostly sapiens. So the reason why, uh, the reason why we are sapiens is not that we were stronger than uh, Neanderthal. In fact, actually, they were stronger. It's not that we are smarter than Neanderthals because they had larger brains. Uh, we probably, according to some theories, mm, quite, quite, uh, uh, quite uh, well, uh, well grounded, are that we are able to speak. We have the ability to, to build up with natural language, to build up words that do not exist, to tell stories, to ask questions to, and so not merely to observe and to say look there's a lion but even the possibility to say what would happen if a lion arrives and we are not on the trees or the probability or the ability to say what if we actually were on the trees when the lion arrived probably poor little arg and urg would be would still be alive so we are going on with this combination of natural language and uh, and of uh, um, and of uh, mathematical language. So, what do we need to calculate counterfactuals? We need mainly two 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 ingredients. Uh, two two two. Oh, sorry. Two two uh, two abilities. The ability to. Um, we need to distinguish between direct and indirect, direct and indirect effects, and we need to understand which of the two we should actually consider, because this may be not so trivial as we, as we think. So, suppose that we are the first. This is one of the, of the most. Uh, um, timely example that I found. Suppose that we want to understand the effect of the birth pill on birth control pill on thrombosis. The there is a suspect that the um, um, birth control pill, the contraceptive, contraceptive pill, can uh, raise thrombotic and um, can enhance thrombotic event. So it's uh, it's uh, it favors thrombosis. But there is also an indirect pill effect on thrombosis that goes on the opposite side. So lowering the pregnancy rate, because of course it's a birth control pill, it lowers thrombotic events by indirect effect, since pregnancy by itself promotes thrombosis. So both the pill and the pregnancies are causes of thrombosis. So what do I mean here? What do I mean to, to, uh, to consider? What should I consider here? What I really mean to consider is the direct 
effect because it's transferable, because it does not depend on the marital or social status. I can, I want to understand the direct effect because the indirect effect is difficult to be transferred on another population. So here, what I want to evaluate is the direct effect. So the, uh, uh, the effect made by, by and only by the arrow pointing from peel to thrombosis. I know perfectly, I can't calculate this with a do operation because a do operation would consider even the indirect pathway, the one passing through um, lowering pregnancy rate. And this is something that I want to uh, rip off from the calculation. So here I want to evaluate direct effect. Remember that my, my, my need and my, my struggle for calculating counterfactuals uh, is a struggle for control, is a struggle to be able to control the consequences of what, I've, of what I do or the ability to assess responsibilities on what have been done. So, in a controlled effect calculation, uh, and this, here, here we come to, we, we go towards the distinction between, um, between direct and indirect. There is also another concept. The first concept is a direct and indirect. The second concept is controlled versus natural. In a controlled effect calculation, we want to know the effect of a prescription. So a modification that we want to impose to the system. We uh, impose the patient to get the pill. We impose the, um, um, the nation to, um, to apply that law, for example. In a natural effect calculation, we want to know which pathways are the most important ones without modifying the system. So it is a description effect. Why these two are important? Because in some cases, we can't modify the system or we don't want to modify the system. So in some cases, um, we want to, um, to calculate the effect of a prescription. In other cases, we want to calculate the effect in a descriptive way because we don't want, we are not able, or it would be extremely unfeasible or even impossible to, 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 to modify the system properly. So, uh, this said, we have understood why we have to distinguish between uh, uh, direct and indirect effect. But the question may be why you should be interested in natural effect. For example, uh, this is one of the cases in which I would never recommend to modify the system to us to understand to understand a, um, an effect. Gender, while one is male or female, is known to have a definite effect on hiring rates. The fact of me being a male or a female, or as it is possible in, in, uh, in recent years, a linear combination or nonlinear combination of the two, have has a definite effect on hiring rate. But which mechanism is responsible for that? Because I can imagine at least two pathways, at least two pathways that can lead to this kind of, of effect. So I can imagine that gender has a direct effect on hiring because the um, human resources office is led or is composed by people that think that if you hire a female, she will uh, here or now or never or, or somewhere get pregnant and then she will lose job hours and then she will lose. Apart from consideration that uh, um, uh, having, uh, having a baby or becoming mother gives you a, a bunch of competencies that are highly transferable, such as the ability to do two things together or to organize and manage things, 
this can we cannot do mm, to do much for that uh, this situation actually exists and i want to understand if in my situation this mechanism works and it is important the other effect is the fact that being male or female you you could have uh, um, undergo a different education pathway uh, you have done uh, different kind of schools there is uh, um, the frequency of of, um, of male and female graduated in uh, in engineering or in uh, in uh, in uh, in philosophy may be quite different on uh, being higher or lower with respect to males. So if the human resources office says, yes, okay, what I want is a philosopher or what I want is an engineer, the gender may have a nine indirect effect depending on what you've studied and uh, uh, of, the, um, of the level that you, uh, that you acquired, but principally on what you've studied. Here, I'm not claiming absolutely that uh, there is some kind of, uh, of uh, fairness or of um, um, uh, objectivity in this. Of course, I'm just saying that this kind of discrimination happens and I want to understand what is the motivation. The first motivation is nonsense. The second motivation, if I am a firm that does um, uh, electrical hoses, probably, probably I need one philosopher and uh, 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 100 of engineers. The philosopher, if his name is Sergio Marchione, is strongly recommended. So, so um, let's try to uh, let's try to um, to go towards our our um, understanding. The direct effect is this. And here we begin to understand where, it, where does the, uh, the difficulty sometimes in understanding counterfactual is. We are accustomed to do operations, but to uh, calculate counterfactuals, we have to distinguish between controlled and uncontrolled and between direct and indirect. Direct and indirect path, path are not due to uh, forcing some variables to get some values. I don't get a direct effect by making gender equal male or female. I calculate direct effect by erasing arrows, by deactivating mechanisms. So I've got a direct effect, gender hiring, and an indirect effect. And I would like to calculate this effect on my on my modified graph. Uh, what we will discover, and you should not be too much surprised about that, if that is that if I have a Markov graph, that is a, a graph that um, in which there are only unidirected arrows and that has got no cycles, then, uh, then I can for sure calculate this effect. So this is quite different as we were saying from, from a, a do operation. In a do operation, you force a variable to get that, um, that, uh, uh, that value. And in making these, you get rid of all the parents of that variable. But what you can't get rid of in a, a do operation are the descendants. Here, the gender has got two descendants, the education and hiring. So you can't, by a do operation, only by a do operation, um, get what you want. So you have to find a different pathway. So why you should, uh, of course, uh, uh, evaluate direct and indirect effects. The first thing is that uh, you want to, um, to you want to evaluate policies, way of behavior, and you have to evaluate this on the natural distribution because you can't do experiments trying to hire only male or on, only female or modify the population by being only male or only female. This would be highly unrecommendable. You want to evaluate the effects on the natural distribution. 
So if the direct natural effect, gender hiring is responsible for the hiring rate, you should act at a local level. So fix your human resources department or probably fire the head of the department. But if the indirect natural effect is responsible for the hiring rate, you should act at another level, at a political level, if you can. So making each kind of education actually accessible with no matter about the gender. And this is a different thing. And if you are a CEO of a firm, you want to understand if there is a direct natural effect. If you are uh, the president of the uh, of the of your nation, you want to understand if there is an indirect natural effect. So the question uh, that I want to answer is this one is the but for question. If the female applicants would add the same education degree that men usually have, what would have been my choices? And this is not experimentally solvable. You can't, you can't mix up thing in an experiment going 30 year, uh, 30 year in the past in order to make people have a different education and social level without changing any other things. Because in order to have the female applicants having the same education degree distribution of men, you should change the whole society. So changing only the head, the, 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 the education of the person without changing the social status, the background status and so on and so forth, no way. This is not experimentally solvable. You have to deal with data and with a smart combination of experiment and data, observation and data. Take care of uh, two uh, of one thing. Often in the literature, you mean you, you find uh, experimentally solvable. What is meant is by means of observation or um, experiments alone. So when you when you um, when you find experimentally solvable, it means that it can't be solved by a, a random controlled um, experiment. Uh, so uh, in this way, with a random controlled experiment, a double blind experiment, this can this issue can't be solved. We have to treat the data, the result of the experiment in a smart way, or we have to treat the result of the observation in a smart way, because in what we're looking at now, we will treat only observation. So uh, let's try to identificate natural effects on Markovian nets. Here we've got a, um, a situation that is quite similar to the one that we were looking there is an X, let's say the gender, there is an Y, the hiring. We want to understand the effect of X on Y and we want to divide the direct effect, the one running on this arrow from the indirect effect, the one going through this arrow or through this backdoor path through this pathway. So this pathway and this and this pathway, and we want to calculate them. Remember, take care of the notation that uh, y subscribed x um, means the outcome of y when the actual, the, 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 the outcome, um, the, the, when x equal, uh, capital X equal x was actually done. And you can read it as a do operation, uh, y when do capital X equal to x is performed. So X is the cause, Y is the effect, and Z are all the intermediate variables. So all the intermediate on a directed path here, we mean. If you looked at the, the slide I was looking before, T and S are not intermediate because they are not on a directed path, but they have still a not negligible effect on the, uh, on the, uh, on the Y. So, a natural direct effect, what is it? An event 
x is said to have a natural direct effect on the variable y in a situation u if this difference is different is 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 not zero so the value so the value um, of y under x equal to x star differs from its value under x equal to x even when we keep z with the same value so z of x star that z attains under x equal to x star if you uh, if you remember if you remember uh, we uh, we tried to speak of this uh, we tried to speak of this uh, of this uh, effect when we were speaking about uh, uh, about the case of china and covid and we asked given the demographic population of china would have would have done better the chinese government to adopt italian measures italian uh, policies instead of the one that they actually had given that they have the same the, their demographic population so it's something that relies on maintaining on maintaining the um, on maintaining the population the same population and changing somewhere they and changing the intervention and changing the control variable this uh, the, the the line that you see uh, on uh, on the upper side is the single uh, and of course uh, if uh, as for a single event for a single value of the variable this is different to zero then we have a natural direct effect there's nothing that we can do about that but usually what we want to understand is the average natural direct effect of event x and this can be uh, done simply by giving by taking the expected value of y uh, giving uh, that we did that um, on the fact that x was x and with the same distribution z of x star and subtract the expected value of y do x star so uh, for the natural population and we try to work out the equations so what we see is that uh, what we see is that the probability of y uh, the probability of y, uh, if I do x and z, is simply, and quite simply, the uh, probability of, uh, of uh, y conditioned on x and z. Why? Because there is no backdoor path uh, between uh, involving y, x, and z. Z is on the directed um, is on the directed um, pathway. So x and x uh, um, unite joint with z is the set of all y parents so i can say this the probability of uh, z do x but, well we can calculate this quite simply by using the backdoor criterion and so we know that we uh, once we understand once we uh, once we block all the uh, all the backdoor paths all the backdoor paths in uh, all the backdoor paths uh, from x to uh, to y to to z we can uh, we can write this uh, we can write this probability so the second line is not uh, is not uh, nothing more than the backdoor criterion the third equation uh, can be uh, uh, can be obtained by thinking that the probability and this is the probability that we need in order to calculate the uh, the, the the first part of the counterfactual if you remember the probability of y uh, on the fact that x and z of x star is nothing more than the probability of y condition on x and z times the probability that z of x star is z averaged over z. And this makes us obtain 
this following line. So, in Markov, uh, in Markov nets, I can on, I can, um, I can every time uh, uh, calculate the uh, the effect of um, the effect of a uh, uh, of a counterfactual of a direct effect just because I'm able to calculate this quantity, the probability of x underscored x and z of x star. So I can uh, join, uh, I can make the same calculation for this probability, the probability of y conditioned on uh, x star and z. And I can show that the natural direct effect on Markovian nets is nothing more than this formula. And we, um, and we um, worked out this formula in the case of a, of a confounded variable. So if we look, there is a confounder here that is T, and there is a backdoor path that goes from X to Z. So we had a, um, a complication. If we have not this complication, so in simple Markovian models in which the effect is not confounded, such as the simple example that we did before on gender, hiring, and education, the, uh, the set S is empty. And, uh, and what we want to do is just uh, this formula, uh, the average, the expected value of Y conditioned on X and Z, uh, minus the expected value of y on condition on x star and z times weighted for this this uh, this uh, this uh, this subtraction is weighted for the probability of z conditioned on x star. So there is another kind of uh, uh, of effect that we want to uh, that we want to calculate. And it, and it is the natural indirect effect. So before what we did was to change the X, we wanted to know uh, the effect of, uh, of X, let's say of the gender, without changing um, on, the, on, a natural, on an, another natural population. What we want to understand in an indirect effect is uh, a, a different thing. We want to understand the effect of the same treatment of the same uh, causal variable, this our x, on, uh, on another population. So natural direct effect, we want to calculate the effect of a different treatment on the same population natural direct indirect effect the effect of the same treatment on a different population and this is what we want to understand if you remember uh, the natural indirect effect was uh, mm, was binded somewhere to the question how would have been the mortality rate in china changed how would have been the mortality rate in china if the chinese measure would have remained the same so the Chinese policies would have remained the same, but they had the same demographic population that Italy had. And uh, this is the way in which we can calculate the average natural indirect effect. You may, be, you may uh, appear to be concerned about how we can calculate this, but there, there are specific ways, but there is a very natural way to do this, and this uh, the old, the, 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 the old simple way, the total effect that is something that we can always calculate because is the effect that we get naturally from data is equal to the natural indirect effect plus the natural direct effect. And so where the total effect TA is not on, is only the average value a y doing X and the natural effect of uh, Y doing X star. So um, this is the um, this is the um, the way 
in which we can in which we can deal with natural uh, direct and indirect effect and here um, and here I, I uh, stop a little bit before a little bit before that what I usually do because I'm quite aware that uh, the um, that what we've seen is not simple. Uh, that uh, um, the lectures uh, were uh, sometimes denser and sometimes less less comprehensible that I that I am to. So uh, I think that is not smart to overload uh, to overload people with uh, with too much concepts especially about uh, time series concepts that are uh, quite require quite um, a different frame of, framework and could uh, make some confusion we already did some confusion with the confactor counterfactual so i don't want to 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 make up more mess so i will stop from a quarter of hour and we will meet here again at 10 o'clock and uh, I would like, and I, I will, will be here for your questions. Questions of any kind about software, about concepts, about uh, things that you uh, may not understood or that you understood better than me and you want to explain me. Uh, <laughs> so, um, let me know, and uh, we will see here in in uh, in a quarter in a quarter of hour, and uh, uh, I will be ready for all uh, your questions and all your um, doubts. And hopefully, I could I can help you and me in order to understand better these sort of things. So see you in a quarter of hour. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, hello everybody, and welcome to the last uh, session of this journey towards causality. And here, uh, I would like to hear from you because uh, uh, we 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 went through many 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 arguments. We we've learned how to uh, intervene to on on calculations and uh, uh, on, on observation and on probabilities. We learned that uh, the effect of doing something is not equal to the probability that we observed something, so that the do is not the conditional probability. We've learned uh, how to deal with uh, graphs and how to intervene, to intervene on graphs, how to understand uh, when we can make do calculations and when we cannot make do calculations. And this is what uh, Pearl calls the second step of the ladder of causation. So the ability to intervene, to ask what if. And then we went one step further and, uh, and we, were, uh, we began to ask counterfactuals. What if this had not been? So to uh, build up different words. And as I said, this was, to, to, was made to give you a grasp of the way of reasoning in this kind, in this kind of, uh, of a situation. And uh, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm aware that uh, these arguments uh, that uh, shakes a little bit of uh, philosophy, a little bit of natural language, and a little bit of mathematics uh, and of graph theory could, uh, could mm, leave you with the sensation that, uh, yes, I thought that I had understood, but now Malbaldi spoke and I, under, and, and, I, uh, and, and I am aware that I understood less than I had before. So, uh, I think that the best thing is to leave the room open for questions. So, uh, so uh, and uh, I would like to, to, to say that I expect questions of 
every uh, of every possible kind. So um, it we we can speak on uh, about uh, the possibilities of this kind of calculation. We can speak about technicalities. We can speak about software. But please uh, uh, feel free to to um, to to ask uh, whichever thing that you would like to uh, to hear. So, uh, if you want to 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 ask, if you want to raise your hand, if you want to write down your questions, if you would like to know more or know more about a, a, a given subject, uh, if you have some curiosity about possible possible applications uh, we can uh, uh, or books or, or articles I'm here to to help so uh, please uh, I'm here I'm here for you and uh, uh, and as far as uh, I I I see no questions I will um, I will speak about uh, of course waiting for the same questions I will speak about the perspective that this uh, that this uh, um, that this kind of calculation can can have um, one perspective is that of uh, uh, reinforcement learning and artificial intelligence so um, trying to use this kind of uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, of calculations to extract concepts because as you probably know uh, uh, reinforcement learning um, I have to to, to, to to apologize but I have to change my setting my setup due to a, a lack of, of uh, electric energy but here we are okay as you as you know as you as you are probably perfectly aware uh, machine learning often uh, gives you the answer to a um, to a given question or gives you a behavior that can be can be exploited but it uh, gives you no answer about why it does happen or what the machine or the the the, the, the software did uh, we have uh, AlphaGo, that is a software that is able to beat Lisi Doll, the world champion of Go. But we don't have a program uh, code that is able to write a book about how to play Go or chess or other things. Machine learning lacks concepts, lacks groups of interactions that are on a, on a hierarchic scale higher than the than the network of uh, artificial neurons binded in each layer and they can be translayer and they can be um, quite different from the linear combination that we usually are able to deal with so one of the thing in which causal uh, causality can help is uh, uh, of course uh, helping machine learning and reinforcement learning to extract to extract concepts. Another thing that this kind of calculation can do is setting up a pathway to a theory of consciousness. Uh, there is a, um, uh, an Italian, Italo-American uh, scientist, a physiologist, Giulio Tononi, that developed in last years the so-called EET, Integrated Information Theory, that is a theory of consciousness. Actually, this theory of consciousness tries to um, investigate consciousness as something that arises when a, um, a status, uh, an informational status, cannot be reduced to, an, to a sum, to a sum of its parts, is an integration of the whole uh, of the network. And this kind of, uh, of theory is grounded on the two calculations by, uh, developed by Pearl, Tian, uh, Rubin, Barenboim, and, on, and all the uh, shipster and all the co-workers of, of Judea Pearl. 
because uh, it is a theory that deals with fictitious intervention of the kind of what if or what would happen. And uh, um, an, an idea of a grasp of this theory can be obtained by visiting the uh, website of Giulio Tononi. Uh, I can, if you want, uh, we can uh, we can look at the at the uh, and try to, to to look at the at the at the at the integration informational theory website and uh, try to get a grasp of this kind of 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 theory. Uh, one of the uh, one of the um, uh, one of the um, most curious uh, thing about this theory is uh, the formation of animates. Here, what you can see is an animate, uh, a fictitious animal that tries to learn to capture these blocks, and uh, um, as well as as the animal grows, as the animal grows and and develops. Uh, it um, it uh, it uh, became able, more able to 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 catch these blocks, and uh, how can the, the the animal the animate catch the blocks? The animate is no more than a causal network that you see that has got sensory organ S one and S two, motor organs M U and one and M two, and the brain that. Uh, calculates the possibility of the, eff the effect of interventions based on do calculations and modify the strength of the connections and uh, leaves part of the connections translated in a sort of genome to its, uh, to its descendants. And uh, while the animate, uh, um, the animate grows, it can uh, it can become it can become a um, uh, it can evolve toward a better fitness and all this is based on actual causation on what we actually we were speaking uh, we were speaking uh, so on and so forth here what you see are only um, only uh, conditional probabilities, but uh, uh, what they do appear here is actually a do probability, that is probability conditioned on the network. Here we consider only complete network, so there is no room for, uh, for, a, uh, an observed, for an observed variables. And the question is, what, which combination of synapses causes the neuron to fire? What caused the action? What caused what? So causation is, uh, is uh, seen as a, as, a, as a pathway toward the understanding of consciousness. And of course, it's too early to, uh, to say if this theory is a correct theory, but uh, um, it is, as far as I, as I know, the most complete and promising theory about consciousness that I've heard. And many, uh, many people have lived down, for example, Christoph Koch has set down his own theory of consciousness to follow the ideas of, uh, of Giulio Tononi. So in my opinion, even if this may not be the correct, the right, if there is a right theory of consciousness, even if this will reveal not a, a feasible theory of consciousness, it is for me a very, very promising theory for artificial intelligence and for artificial uh, intelligent behavior. So uh, this is something that I would like you to be aware of. Now, I will stop for, for some, some seconds and I would like to, uh, to ask you again if there are some questions. Of course, if there are not or if there are questions that you would like, that you would like to leave um, uh, to, to ask me in a, uh, privately by writing me privately, it's absolutely, it can be absolutely done. 
if you feel that there is no room, not enough room, or if you think that you have discovered a new secret formula and that you want to share it with me and only with me, it is perfect. It can be perfectly done. It's perfectly fine. But uh, if there is some question, some general particular question that you would like to address me, please uh, do it now. Yes, about the previous example, please, Andrea. Andrea asked a question about the previous example. So just a moment that I will um, that I will um, allow you to uh, to to speak. So you can speak. Okay, thanks. Uh, I have a question about the, the previous example where we were trying to compute the direct effect and the direct effects. Yes. From a practical point of view, from my uh, grasp uh, so far of uh, of all these things. What we actually do are basically a sort of uh, uh, regression techniques in order to find some coefficients that should uh, estimate somehow the, uh, the actual uh, causal effect. But in the previous example, uh, there was a, a situation where if we wanted to check a direct effect from uh, X to Y and from Z to Y, at just the, just the moment that I I I I I I, um, I take the slides. Just a moment. Yeah, it uh, might be. Uh, okay. Um, okay. The one where we had the vector path from. Uh... This one. You mean? Just a moment. Yes. I I I I. I put the screen on. Okay. Yeah, exactly this one. Uh, from a, a practical point of view, what yeah. I will do will be something running a regression, uh, OLS, whatever, from uh, by using uh, y as a as an outcome, and x and z as uh, the explain explanatory variables. So what what I have in mind is that the coefficient of x will capture the effect from the arrow x to y, and the coefficient from z will capture the effect z to y. Is it uh, correct? Uh, well, uh, is, um, uh, reg by regression, you mean that you have some linear structural uh, model? Yeah, I can, I can use a, a structure, a linear regression, but also something more fancy, something more complex. Yes, like, uh, this uh, this can be done when you when you have uh, when you have uh, a model, uh, uh, but uh, um, uh, what is the the, uh, the the in this case in this case when you have a model uh, you can do you can uh, uh, you can do what you what you what you were saying, but uh, what um, what uh, you can do here, and what I was um, what I was uh, speaking about here is when you have not a model, and here, uh, and here you have to rely on probabilities only, and consider uh, consider uh, consider one thing that your linear regression may have a uh, may have some. Uh, um, Let's say this: uh, you can you deal with uh, models, and uh, uh, because you can't usually deal with probabilities when you have some joint probabilities that are zero. All this, uh, all the meaning, all the um, the attempt that I do towards this. Uh, um, um, the attempt of calculating direct uh, nat natural uh, natural effect. Uh, um, here is, uh, um, is justified by the fact that if I have X star, I, I will not have uh, the, out the Y outcome that I look and vice versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you have models, if you have models, what you, what you say can be done uh, because in your Z, 
in your Z model is included, um, uh, let's say the backdoor, the backdoor path that you see here is uh, automatically included. Uh, um, so you can, the, uh, let's say the indirect effect is, uh, um, is blocked in this sense, uh, um, in this sense, but if you uh, consider only Z, you see that Z is a collider of S and X. So if you consider only Z, you could, uh, um, you could uh, um, open, a, 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 um, let's say, a, a, a lack of information in the sense that you can, that you may consider, that you may undersample some way uh, uh, your, your, um, your situation. I'm not sure that while using uh, uh, SCM, uh, um, let's say linear or, or non-linear models, uh, this, this kind of problem can occur. For sure, in using probabilities, it can occur. Prob probably in using model, it will not occur. So this is what are you saying? Yeah, my, my, my point is, would be like that, uh, since I would run something like a regression using both X and Z, what I would cap, what I think I, I am capturing on the coefficient on the Z will be the arrow from Z to Y. And what I think I am capturing on the coefficient of X will be the arrow from X to Y. Yes. Uh, in this because sense, uh, yeah. I am I am kind of uh, removing all the vector behind it. Yes, you, uh, it can be it can be uh, it can be said in this way: the arrow contains the mechanism by which the value of z yeah. con um, modifies epsilon, and this arrow contains the way in which x modifies epsilon. So. If you want to know about Z and about X and you have models, the way that you suggest is perfectly fine if you have okay. models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these, these, the, the necessity to, to um, this, uh, this example was taken, as I said, because of course, and you can, you can see even here, if you, um, if the, uh, if the model is not confounded with probability, you can directly do this. That is exactly um, what you said. Here in this case, with models, you can, you can say what you say, because you're not interested in which way you're not sampling, but you're just calculating. Okay. Uh, so in, 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 uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, structural equation, this can be done because, because let's say, X, the mechanism XZ will uh, contain this arrow and this arrow, and this, this pathway and this pathway. So uh, this, is the, this is the spirit. Um, so you can, of course, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can do it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. And I will stop the uh, vision. If there is any other uh, question, please let me, let me know. It's wonderful, wonderful that I've been so clear. So um, I've uh, um, shared with, uh, with the administrator some papers, some technical papers about counterfactuals that are um, that uh, speak about the calculation, the technical calculation of counterfactuals uh, from models, from structural models and from probabilistic models. So from uh, both the uh, probability theory and for the structural models. Uh, and uh, together with the example of the China COVID and versus Italy COVID-19 stories, um, I would like to leave you with a final advice. There are many, uh, many good books that are available um, uh, and that I will uh, recommend you for, uh, for, for, uh, for studying and for, for, for going uh, for, for further, in, further understanding these things. And I will show 
The first one from which I would start, there is this one, uh, causal inference um, in statistics. I will I will send you the the, the bibliographic um, bibliographic uh, um, references. For this book, there is also a very nice uh, uh, GitHub repository with uh, with uh, with many notebooks, Python notebooks by Bruno Gonzalez. And uh, of course, the, um, the sacred technical book by Judea Pearl, Causality. But I would encourage you to, um, to go through the original papers for a simple reason after, after reading uh, the, the primer, if you want to read the primer. But um, I strongly encourage you to go through the technical papers that I sent to, to the administrator and that they will share with you because they are more clear. They're more easy to understand. Uh, probably when the articles were said, the theory was still in his infancy, uh, in his early infancy, and the authors were uh, urged to explain better what they were done actually. Um, the book is uh, rather more a survey than, uh, a, than a, um, a, a technical book. So um, at the first sight, it may look, uh, and it looked to me quite hard to understand in some of these parts. So articles usually are more clear. So I strongly encourage you to go through the original literature and the original paper. And uh, again, uh, you may have get a grasp of these sort of things, but the only thing to, to, mm, that have been done to be done in order to really understand is to do things. So to code, to calculate, to use code, and to go through your own mistakes. I can, I can list my own mistakes, but the lecture would really, really take too much time. So I finish here. I thank you very much for your attention. And if you want to, to, to let me know about other curiosities or questions or active research you're interested in, as I said last time, we are actively in the research of, of causality in football, in association football. Uh, so if you're interested in some of these themes, please let me know. And uh, uh, thank you again for all your attention and all the best for your future career.